Hey guys, just following up on the last Eastern Romans video. This video will show you how exactly I converted every one of these guys and we'll provide some general green stuff sculpting tips. As always, start with the uh, tiniest piece of green stuff you can get. And then something I found over the years is take the ball of green stuff you thought was about right and then actually cut it in half and that's probably the actual amount of green stuff that you want to use. Less is best and we can always add more. So what I'm doing here is covering up the little circles and I mentioned in the last video that I just wanted to make them look a little bit more like a late period guys. After working it in there initially I will go back and lubricate the tool a bit with either some water, spit, or some Vaseline. And then kind of for the final shine to smooth it out, I'll actually use my finger. So the trick to this is making sure that you're just kind of rubbing back and forth really quickly and not actually pressing into the green stuff because that'll leave fingerprints. Sometimes I'll go back with the sculpting tool and do kind of a final final pass to get rid of any uh, abrasions from your, from your fingerprints. jabbing it on here, working it in with the spoon end of my tool. This is either the Wax 5 or the Wax 7. And this is an old Games Workshop sculpting tool. I actually thought I, <laughs> thought I lost it a few months ago, but I found it. It's actually available in the Army Painter sculpting tool. So this is the tool that I am most comfortable with. It's the one that I learned on. So whatever one you've learned on is, is probably going to work for you, but if I had a recommendation, it would be that tool. I'll have a link to it below. Get my finger at it again. So on this arm, um, you can see I use my fingers to apply it. That actually usually works better than a, a sculpting tool as the uh, green stuff tends to stick better to the model rather than your fingertips because of the natural body oils. So I put a, quite a bit on this arm here as it was glued to the body so I kind of wanted to fill in gap between the sh shoulder and arm. You can see I use my fingers quite a bit. If you're filling in details and you're just kind of smoothing things out, your, your, your fingers work pretty well. And you can see not didn't get quite enough putty on that first pass, so you can always add a second little second little ball there to finish the job. And that does seem to make a big difference as far as learning how to sculpt goes. Start with less, and you can always add more. If you're starting with a huge mass of green stuff, then you need to kind of peel peel it away as you're working along and uh, that doesn't seem to work as well.
Okay, this is the pretty much the only other sculpting tool that I use. It's called a color shaper, and this is a taper point, a size too soft, and you can see that the tip of it is kind of, it's a little mushy like that, so that's kind of its main strong point. So you can really work it into areas that your sculpting tool can't get into. You can really work folds and stuff like that, and it's an excellent tool. I'll have a link to one below. Um, be between the, uh, the, the spear and spoon tips on my main tool and that color shaper, that's pretty much all, all I use for 99% of my sculpting. I do have a few other tools sitting around, but those are just kind of really r randomly used. Okay, getting that last arm in there, smoothing it up. So one thing I should say is for this video, I did all four uh, areas on the model at once, and I, I don't recommend doing that because you're moving the model around and the tendency is you might end up pushing your finger into a wet area of green stuff on the opposite side of the model or different parts when you're holding it to get at the angles. It's generally a bad idea. I did some extra effort making sure I, I wasn't doing that on this guy. And when I was actually going through on all these guys, I would pick like, you know, the left arm on all of them and I just do them all. And so you kind of build up your, your skills at that one arm and then you don't have to worry about mucking up the green steps. Okay, so for the heads on these, I used two different kinds of heads, mainly. One was the War Games Factory heads, which had a uh, nice long neck piece attached to them. So I'm just working out the uh, hole, <laughs> the neck hole here, using a smaller drill and then a bigger one, and then I'll be able to sit the War Games Factory heads directly into that. And one thing I did with those War Games Factory heads, those are basically the Anglo-Saxon heads I had laying around and so those heads were the ones with the Phrygian caps. One thing I did was kind of chop down that hat before I put it on so you can see I'm using plastic glue on these guys. I did have quite a few people loaning these bad boys out to me so if you are one of those folks Thank you very much. So the other heads I used were actually the Gripping Beast Viking heads primarily, the ones without the uh, nose and eye pieces. And these ones looked pretty much like all the Byzantine helmets I saw on the, the stock models you can buy. So that's what I used on almost all of these. All right, here's a fun bit of green stuff work, making the uh, conical helmets on the uh, War Games factory heads then. So you can see, put a blob on this dude's head, and now I'm just working the green stuff down to uh, make a smooth transition into the side of what's gonna be his helmet. And due to the, the hand and the bow there, I can't quite work my finger into all the different angles there. Um, usually, again, trying to smooth stuff out, you, I think your finger works best. Okay, once I've got this smoothed out completely, you could actually leave it like that. Um, you know, I've seen some of the helmets from various manufacturers just kind of resemble more of the bull style, but uh, it's fun I'm putting the little, the little point on there. I think it looks <laughs> kind of distinctive.
I'm gonna lube up my fingers a bit. I got a little Vaseline on there um, just to make things a little slippery. And I'm gonna start pinching the just the top of it. And when you do that, it's kind of works at like two dimensionally, so you gotta have to keep changing the angle on the model, and eventually you'll be able to um, get a really distinctive point if you if you keep working at it from various angles. And it's really it's really easy to do. It looks looks really really cool. Uh, you can see I'm almost there. Get out of focus, but there we go. <laughs> nice pointy helmet. I really like how those turned out. Okay. On the Viking helmeted guys, so, you know, they've already got the helmets. I'm not going to do anything with those. Um, you know, if, if, if you wanted to, you could grind them down a bit and do those same style of helmets. What I'm doing is cutting off the little hair bits in the back because I'm going to go back and add the little canvas or chainmail um, kind of hanging piece that goes around the back of these guys' necks. And I ended up using paper for it because I like the effect of it. But even with the paper, the first step was laying down a layer of green stuff around the back of him right there so um, you, you could use green stuff and I did do green stuff on a few but just with the numbers of guys I was doing uh, it seemed like paper was the easier way to go but we'll, we'll see exactly how I did that in a second here so this is 70 pound drawing paper something like that you can see I have a tiny little scissors here and it's pretty challenging trying to get this on camera. You're gonna see I'm kind of angling the cuts on each end, so it's not super important exactly how how long you make this little piece of paper, but we're, we're gonna cut it down after it's on the model. But you should be able to see, once I'm done with all the cuts here, exactly what uh, we're going for. So this is gonna go around the back of the helmet to kind of hang down and it's a little little delicate operation hence the tiny scissors but you should be able to see i'm just making a curved piece of canvas or or what have you Hopefully you can see well enough what I'm going for there. And then I'm going to dip it in some, just some, some white glue, PVA glue, Elmer's glue mixed with a little water uh, just to get it a little bendy and then that'll help, help it stick to the model. And so I'll use my sculpting tool to fish it out here. Okay, then this is a little tricky at first, um, even though I'd already did a bunch at this point. So you did, one thing, you don't want too much glue on there. So I was kind of wiping off the excess. And you're gonna kind of stick it on one side of his head there. And you kind of want to push it into the green stuff and get it to stick that way. And then you use your your thumb to really lock it into place as you pull it around to the other side. And it's, it's fiddly, I'm not gonna lie. I'm surprised I did like 50 of these, but somehow I managed it. You lock it into place with your finger on the other side, and then you're gonna pull it around following the brim of the helmet. And then at this point, this is why it didn't matter how long you really made it. Obviously, you want to try to make it the right size, but if it ended up being a little long, then I'd use the scissors to cut it down to size. And then using the, the sculpting tool, 
helps to uh, stick it around. So you can see on the, the side of his head there, the way that it hangs down and there's still a space between the uh, canvas, kind of his neck. That's really hard to do with green stuff. Um, you, you can do it, but it's really time consuming. It involves letting the green stuff cure and then kind of almost doing the same thing you did with the paper, but with green stuff that's almost cured. So pressing it in there, making sure it's sticking. And that's how I did most of them. Some were longer, some were shorter. Um, I didn't really have a, a preference. I kind of mixed it up as I went along. And here's how the other guy turned out. You can see he kind of has a shorter one. In any case, that is how I did my Byzantine infantry. If you have any questions about what you saw, go ahead and post a comment below. Otherwise, I will catch you guys for the next video.